I have said, I've made a statement from time to time, and I spoke a lot on the difference between emotions and decisions. We talk about anger, we talk about forgiveness. I believe that was last week that we talked about forgiveness. Uh, but under the, under the heading of emotions, there is one emotion that really, really causes problems in our world. This is, in my opinion, the strongest human emotion. Do you know what it is? Jealousy. What is it? Jealousy. Jealousy. That's 100 percent right. I had someone tell me, no, the strongest emotion is love. And I said, my love is not emotion. My love is not emotion. There are emotions in my love. There is anger in love sometimes, isn't there? You love somebody, that's why you got mad at them. If you didn't love them, you wouldn't have cared, right? So in the heading of love, there is emotion. In the heading of hate, there is an emotion. But hate is not an emotion. Hate is a decision. Love is a decision. But based on these things that we experience through those, there are emotions. And in my mind, jealousy is the strongest human emotion. What has jealousy caused over time? Just in your experience, think back. What has jealousy caused? A lot of division, actually. Division, absolutely. They ever get jealous of each other? You're not going to do Kids get jealous of each other in the home, right? It happens. And what happens when they get jealous of each other? What? Bad stuff. Bad stuff? You want to punch each other in the nose, don't you? Yeah. But the good, yeah. The good thing about brothers, once you get the punching over with you back to playing together, you still love each other, right? Yeah, yeah. Jealousy. What happened to the older brother when the prodigal son came home? They threw a big party for the prodigal son. They killed the fatted calf. You know what that, that means, kids? No. They went out and got the one that was marbled up. They went out and got the one that, that was ready for the grill. And they had an absolute party. Put a new ring on his finger, a new clothes on him, got him washed up, had a celebration. And his brother's like, Dad? Where's my party? I didn't even leave and disgrace you, and I didn't get a party. Right? Jealousy. Do you know why that it is common? Uh, uh, it's common for employers to request that their employees not discuss something with other employees. What is that something? Their paycheck. <laughs> their paycheck. Why? Jealousy. You know, we can look around us in this world at those people that seem to have what we desire. And we can have a jealousy. We can covet what they have. We can, we can see what's going on. And believe it or not, it even happens in spiritual realms. Churches are jealous of other churches. Church members are jealous of of other church members. Uh, church uh, uh, denominations are jealous of other denominations. And you see it happen. And, and, and you'll, you'll take a big, a big area where there's lots of people. And let's say there's two main churches in that area. And they can both be Baptist churches. Even in the same association. One of them gets 12 passenger van. What's the other one do? 16 passenger That's right. Man, well, the other church now, back and forth, back and forth. What happened? Wow, we got a whole fleet. We pick them up. We not only pick them up, we feed them. We not only feed them, we give them all hat every time. What's happening? Because of jealousy, what has ministry turned into in a lot of circles? Competition. Competition. What was that back there? A circle. 
circus. The circus, competition. And, and, and because we got to have what they have. we got to be bigger and better than what they have. And once you're bigger and better, maybe those two big churches ought to pull together, share what they have. It's like a keeping up with the Joneses. That's exactly that. right. But you know what? When you truly find out about the Joneses, what are they doing? They're trying to keep up somebody else. They want more. They want more. And they want more. Little does Macy know, now that she's killed this big doe, she's celebrating that in her heart. But in a little bit of time, what's she going to want? A big buck. A big buck. Or a, a buck. And then once she has a buck, what's she going to want? A bigger buck, right? And, and I'm not saying she's jealous of anybody. I'm just saying it's human nature to want to, to get bigger, better, and better, and better. The problem is, there's nothing wrong with aspiring for better. Let me say that. But if the reason that we want better is because somebody else has it, then what is it? Thou shalt not what? Covet. Covet, right? I hear a lot of talk, and I'm trying to not be political here, about pay in this country and equal treatment, equal rights, and all of those things. What is the root? And sometimes, sometimes there are issues that need to be resolved. I'll say it like this. Sometimes there is merit to a complaint about how people are treated. or how, and Let me throw that out there. But in reality, most, most of the chaos in our world has come from competition to be the one with the most, be the one with the best, or be the one that feels like they've achieved the most, or had the most, or seen the most, or, or been a part of the most. And, 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 you know, and the king wants his kingdom to be what? What's a king want his kingdom to be? Most important. The most important. He wants all the other kingdoms of the world to look and say, man, wow, that's king. Now that's king, right? Now that's a king. And, and uh, you know, you ever been the one that was pretty good at something? And people thought you were pretty good at it? And then somebody showed up that was really good at it? What happened? We had a we had a, a piano player where I was one time, and she was good, no doubt about it. And, and this is a good, godly woman. I don't want to put any kind of jealousy spin on this. I, I'm not, because she wasn't being that way. But it just reminded me of this. And she played very well. And we had a guest one Sunday, one singing. Her name is Jesse Boyd. I said, Miss Jessie, would you play a song for me? Oh, boy, did she play, and I played the guitar, and we just got after it. Had a good time doing that. <laughs> and the other piano player said, I'm going to sit out <laughs> the rest of the time. I said, I think it would be better if Miss Jessie got to play today. And she, and, and let, me, let me share your, her heart with you. She really was not jealous of Miss Jessie. She wanted to hear Miss Jessie. She wanted to listen to her play, and and and, and, uh, I, and Jesse Boyd, if you actually see this video, you might. I watched her one time playing the piano, and we were having a foot washing, and she's playing that piano, and they washed her feet, and she never missed a note. She stuck one foot out and was playing, and then they come to the other side. She stuck the other foot out. And they washed her. They, they they washed her feet, and she never missed a beat. But I've seen that exact scenario that I just mentioned play out where someone gets jealous. And I'll tell this story. I remember one Sunday the piano player came to me and said, Brother Steve, I don't feel really good today. I, I, I just, I don't feel good. Could you ask or the other piano player, could, could you ask her to play today? I said, well, sure. And I went up to the other person that played the piano, and I explained that, that she didn't feel very good. And she said, oh, I'll be happy to help. So she went playing. Well, somebody after service came up to me with their arms crossed. I don't like how things are going. I said, well, how are they going? Kicking her off the 
piano. I said, excuse me? And she began to tell me how it was wrong that I took so-and-so off the piano, so-and-so to play. And I said, what you don't understand and what you don't know are the things that I know. I was requested by that very piano player to have the other one play. And, 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 and she got jealous for someone. You see what I'm saying? Because she didn't know what was truly going on. And, and, and I think that we have to be careful with that. She was, and, and I'll give her credit, she was caring for the other person. That's why she was mad. She was afraid that that person would have got their feelings really hurt. She didn't want to see that happen. So I want to give her credit for defending. But yet, I think she should have asked some questions <laughs> before she got really, really mad. And, and, and that jealousy kicked in. And because that jealousy kicked in, she was really angry at me for what had been done. When we think about what God has given us, every musician can think of a better musician. And if they can't, they're probably so stuck on themselves that we don't need to talk about it, right? Every ball player can think of what? A better ball player. Every hunter can think of a, a better hunter. Every shooter, right, Ryan, can think of a better shooter. Everybody can think of somebody else that maybe got a little bit more than what they got in a certain area that they would like to have. But do you know what the fix-all of jealousy is? Let's talk about churches. What is everything in the church? Who does it belong to? Who owns everything in the church? God. And that other church, who owns everything in that church? So when you start looking at it at whose it truly is, it's all his. I've heard people say that the Bible says to give 10% of your money back to God. Is that true? Think about it. Where are we supposed to put 10%? goes to the church. Does that mean the other 90% is mine? To do with what I feel to see fit and how I see fit? The Bible says everything that I have belongs to him. The 10% that's already his, he's not telling me to give 10% to the church of what was mine. He's telling me to give 10% of what was his that he allowed me to oversee to the church, okay? And then on top of that, everything that we have belongs to him. Whether it's our, our even my, my, our pretty duck mounts over here at the house, who do they belong to? The bottom line is, is there anything else, is there anything on this planet and go beyond the planet? that doesn't belong to God. So if we truly received what we deserve, what would we have? Just think about that. If we truly received what we actually deserve. Now, let me read the passage of Scripture. Matthew chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that, is, that, that isn't householder and went out early in the morning to hire laborers into the vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give thee or give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his servant, or unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire. 
beginning from the last to the first. And when they came, that which were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should receive what? More. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burdens and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou we agree, or thee, thou agree with me for a penny? Take that as thine, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. It is not lawful, is, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last, for many be called, but few chosen. I want to point out one interesting detail in this account. The first workers that he hired early in the morning, they agreed for what? This is a contract, if you will. They agreed to work the day. And I want you to understand how long was their day? We think we have long work days. <laughs> Bible also says thou shalt work six days a week. But anyway, we're not going to get into that because we like our three-day week or our two-day weekends, right? They agreed to work the full day for a penny. What did the last people that he went and hired agreed to work for? They didn't even know what they were getting paid. These men knew that work was available and they had no income. They had no money. So when somebody said, I'll hire you, come work, what did they do? They went and worked because they needed work and they needed money. They didn't even ask what they were getting paid. The first that came worked out a deal, worked out a contract. We'll work for that. I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm just pointing out that that's what they did. But then those that came last had enough faith in the guy that was hiring them that they worked without even knowing what they were getting paid. And then they were rewarded for that faith in their employer. But if you look here, all through the day, people were hired as meat became evident. He was worried he wasn't going to get in the harvest. He was worried that the, the fields weren't going to get the work that they needed done. And as, as, as the day went on, he kept gathering more and more and more, trying to get this done so that he didn't have a loss in his farm. But yet, at the end of the day, he paid everyone fairly. Some would say that it was not fair. Not once in here does it talk about the quality of work. <clears throat> How many details do we not know about his decision to pay who what? There's a whole lot of details that we do not know. And we can make, and, and, and all of us, I believe, would be hypocritical if we would say that we wouldn't be jealous if we found out somebody was making more money than us, especially if they hadn't been there as long. How many times has war broke out in the workplace because of thoughts like that and because of conversations like that? But it's not limited to the workplace. And it is the root of jealousy in our hearts and in our lives because we begin to look around at what other people have. What happens when we begin to look around at what other people have? Is it not easy? to overlook the blessings that we have right in front of us. There are many people that in the world standards have much, but many of those people that have much by the world standards are miserable. Many people have very little by the world standards, but have perfect peace and joy and happiness in their hearts and in their lives because they are grateful to God for what he has provided them. Another thought I have when I read this 
I've been told by people that they do not believe in a deathbed of salvation. They don't believe that somebody can live all of their life and then knowing they're dying, okay, now I'm going to turn it over to God and be saved. If a deathbed salvation does not exist, then Jesus lied to the thief on the cross when he said, today will thou be with me in paradise. The grace of God is not determined by how well you lived your life because then it's not indeed grace at all. These people hired throughout the day receive the same reward in the end. God loves his creation. God loves all people. And it doesn't matter at what stage of their existence in life that they come to understand and know that love. When they walk into the other side, what are they going to receive? And I got news for you. There's not going to be lifelong Christians sitting in glory, ranking themselves above those that were saved just before they got there. Do you know what's happening in glory? When somebody gets saved just before they die? Woo! Thank you! Oh, yes! They're so happy because at the last second, they receive Jesus and they're going to make it. They're going to get there. Can we look at it that way? Can we look at it like that soul that was lost for so long was found? Do you know about the party? that they threw for the prodigal son? That's absolutely nothing compared to what goes on in heaven when just one soul received Jesus Christ as Savior. I want you to think about that. One soul received Jesus Christ as Savior in heaven. I, I, I think about it kind of, and, and this might sound silly, but what happens when the ball player bumps that home run? They send off fireworks and this and that, big celebration. There's going to be some celebrating in a couple days for one side or the other, right? <laughs> there is not one celebration that we have here on this earth that compares in any way to the celebration that happens when just one soul receives Jesus Christ as Savior. I want us to be a people of gratitude towards God a people that can put aside jealousy because when we can put aside jealousy, we are one step closer to being the witnesses and ministers that God has called us to be. In saying that, how many of us have an opinion? I guarantee you if we pick certain subjects and talk amongst ourselves about those subjects, we'll find out that we have differences in opinions. And it seems to be that right now our country, the, the media would like to push that there are only two opinions. And, and that's not accurate at all. But in just a few days, whichever side takes the election, the amount of jealousy that's going to happen in our world, we have may never have seen yet. And what do people do when they're jealous? How many murders have happened because people are jealous? How many, uh, they burned down ball stadiums because people are jealous. I, I, was it the Braves, the Cardinals were playing one time and they had to stall the game because bunch of jealous fans just threw every bottle they could think of out on the field. Remember that? They just threw, I think it was the Braves. I think it was a wild card game, wasn't it? I'm almost sure it was. Anyway, they had, to, they had, a, they had a big deal. What's that? No, no, it, it, was, at the, it was at the Braves, yeah, uh, their home stadium. The, they did the same thing at Chicago because they had, uh, what, the 50 cent beer night and they were all in bottles and they actually, uh, this was back a long, long time ago, and they actually, they never finished the game. 
too dangerous. Because they were throwing mm -hmm. the whole bottles out on the field. Like Why would they do that? I guarantee, I would not want to be an umpire. Mm -hmm. Strike! One guy goes, yes! The other guy goes, no! Yeah. No matter what somebody is, yeah. they're jealous. They don't like what was happening. They don't like what was said. They don't like the decision that was made. And Brandy's heart is evident here. I don't know that we've ever seen the likes of the emotional outbursts that are going to occur. No matter which side. And I hate to say that and call it sides. Our country shouldn't be about sides. Our churches shouldn't be about sides. But right now, it's divided. Very divided. And what is, uh, what is said about a house that is divided? We cannot stand on We need prayer. We need more prayer each day. We need prayer ahead of this. We need prayer after this. Regardless of the outcome, my God is still God. He still wants amazing things for his children. And he still is on his throne. But we need to be in prayer about those that are in our country that are so divided to the core. And people are making fun of those that are lashing out in outbursts, tantrums, if you will. They even make collage type videos of tantrums being thrown because someone's seen a particular flag or a particular and we, we have a tendency to just start forming opinions but what we should be seeing is the sad state that things are in and being in much prayer We're going to pray. We're going to pray now. We're going to lift up our country, our world. We're going to lift up our elections. We're going to lift up candidate Joe Biden. We're going to lift up President Donald Trump. We're going to lift up Nancy Pelosi. We're going to lift up Schumer and, and all of these names of people that you can think of that are, are the big players, if you will, in what's going on in our country. Because regardless if I agree with them, regardless of their stand on anything, they are a soul. They are a soul that needs Jesus Christ and they are a soul that God loves and that God shed his blood for in his son Jesus Christ. I know people that are praying for one side to get it. Praying for the other side to get it. I'm praying for them all to get it. To understand. To see the hand of God. And to turn their lives and their political leadership unto the Lord. Regardless of who wins this election, God can do amazing things through that individual. And it should be our prayer that he is allowed to do so. It should be our prayer that we lift them up. We need to pray for the safety of voters in this uneasy, unstable climate. We need to pray for honesty in their voting. We need to pray for God to move upon the voter as they check the blog. I have my opinion. And I have prayed about my opinion. And most of all, I need to vote the way that God is leading me to vote. God knows what he can do. If you think, well, I'll just, I'll just quote this. God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I'm just going to throw that out there. What the enemy meant for evil... God can use for what? For good. So Satan, are you listening? What you are meaning for evil, my God is going to use for good. Let's pray.
Let's pray. God, we lift up our country. We pray that you move in the hearts and the minds of politicians, of law enforcement, of judges, of leaders in our country. We pray, Lord, that you would just move in their hearts and, and that they would see the godly ways to do things. That they would seek counsel from godly men and women. And that they would seek counsel from your word and the direction of your Holy Spirit. God, we pray for a mass moving of your Holy Spirit across our land. We pray, Lord, for you to begin to prick the hearts of all those in our country. God, that they would not see the turmoil, that they would not see the hatred and, and, and the bickering and the fighting and the, and the lashing out, but they would see a way to you, a way through your grace. God, we pray that you move in the hearts of the American voters. We pray, Lord, that the reporting of the votes would be honest. And we pray, Lord, for those that are voting to seek you and not their own opinions, even myself. God, I pray, Lord, that you help the voters in our country, Lord, to understand that men and women have died, sacrificed their very life so that they could have that right to cast that vote. But God, I pray, Lord, that you would just give our country and our world an acceptance, Lord, of what you choose to happen. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just calm those with peace in their hearts, Lord, that are in turmoil. Those, Lord, that want to lash out. Those that want to either celebrate or protest, Lord, in destruction and violence. I pray, Lord, that you show them your love, that they see your love, and that no matter what is going on around them, Lord, that they would be overwhelmed by your peace, the only peace, God, that can bring the settling down that we need in our country. God, I don't know if I've ever seen a more pivotal election. God, I don't know if I've ever seen so much unrest, either way, that this goes. And God, I pray that you would just anoint us with your spirit. Anoint those that protect us. The military. Who stand for the freedoms that we have. Who fight for the freedoms that we have. We pray Lord for your hand of protection. That you would cover them with honesty and with grace. And with godly authority. We pray for those police officers Lord. And those uh, law enforcement individuals that you would move in their hearts that you would protect their hearts Lord from bitterness from hatred from even racism Lord if it's some be there God I pray Lord that you would just help them as they seek Lord to uphold the laws of our land God that you would help them each night to get home safely Lord and to appreciate you for the day that they've had and the safety that they have been given. We just, we just pray for you and not to anoint them, Lord, with your spirit, with your peace, and with your power. God, we pray for the criminals right now, those that are out there intending to do harm to others. We pray that you move in their hearts. We pray that you move in their lives and in their minds, that they could see the error of what's going on. And even, Lord, if they have a right to say what they need to say, because this is a free country. If they have a feeling a certain way and want to express it, that they can do so. But God, without harm and without violence and without prejudice, God, we pray for those not yet old enough to vote. Those whose future is in the hands right now of this election regardless of which way that it goes. God, we pray that you move among them. Help these adults, Lord, to be the example that they need to see to how to behave and how to work as a productive member of our country and of our society. Protect them, Lord, 
from the harms of this world. God, protect them from the chaos that's going around and help them to see you through that chaos. That they could rise up, Lord, as the next generation that's going to bring this country back to their knees in front of you. Help them to see the hypocrisy on both sides of our government, Lord. That they may know how to correct those things. Know how to turn their lives and their world and this country over to you. God, we pray that you bless this generation coming along. That they would receive the joys, the peace, and the freedoms, Lord, that we want to leave them. God, we pray for our world. If we could see great revival in this country, what a witness it would be to those around us. Help us, Lord, to love those who hate us. Help us, Lord, to be the witnesses to those that want to kill us. God, we pray for revival. We pray for an uprising of your spirit and your people that this world has never seen before. We pray, God, that you would just pour out your anointed favor upon us. And that we would all turn and seek your way and seek your will. And that this country would fall on her knees, Lord. Come before you. Confess our sins. And let you revive our land. God, we know that even being called our land, this land is your land. This world is is your world and all people are your people whether they accept you or not you are still the God in their life God I pray Lord that no matter the outcome of any of this that we've prayed for thus far that the result would be individuals coming to know your son Jesus Christ as Savior God I pray that you would just Make a massive move of evangelism where people for the first time will hear about salvation and what your word stands for and what your word means and that they can have freedom from sin, that they can have freedom from the bondage of the, that they are in and that they can have, Lord, eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, as opinionated as I am to not let my opinions interfere with my love for humanity and the need for others to hear the gospel message. Help me, Lord, to put aside my opinions and be able to share with others, Lord, no matter who those people are, about your son Jesus Christ and his love. Help us, Lord, to be Christians. The very word is to be Christ-like. Help us, Lord, starting right here in our hearts, in this church, to be as Christ-like as possible. That as we move forward, Lord, that we would share with others and they would become Christ-like. And, and they would share and it would be exponential, Lord, that the, the, the movement would happen. And we would see the greatest turn to you that has ever happened in this world. God, we lift up America. We lift up this great country. God, we know that you are the only one that can make this land great. All of the blessings that we experience have come from you. But like spoiled children, Lord, we've squandered away many, many of those blessings. Help us, Lord, as a country to unite in your love and in your grace. We pray, Lord, for your abundant grace to be bestowed upon us today.